Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Hope you guys are doing well today. I'm gonna to take some time out of your day to talk about Kyber Network. If you've been following me for a while now, you know that I'm very bullish on DeFi and I have been for quite some time now. But Kyber was brought to my attention originally by one of my Discord members. And after reviewing their tokenomics model, seeing all the partnerships that they've announced and all the wallets that have integrated Kyber Network, I figured it was time to show everybody what the fuss is about in a formalized video review. Given the entire industry is so dynamic, it's very tough to keep up with all the information. For those of you guys who don't have the time and you guys wanna streamline your learning, you guys should definitely check out my Patreon. For everybody that's an early supporter, you're gonna get huge discounts. Out of all the benefits that you see listed here, Substack was the most recently added benefit. And if you decide to subscribe to my private Substack, you'll get updates delivered directly to your mailbox. This includes tokens I'm buying, projects that I'm looking into, general market analysis. And just about a week ago, I hired somebody to write about C5 platforms. In addition to all this, you can expect more products and services to be added in the future. And so for those of you guys who join early, you guys will get the biggest benefits out of this. With the intro out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into this video review. To start this video off, let's talk about what Kyber Network is. To simply put it, it allows people to exchange tokens in a decentralized manner. This way, users can keep custody of their assets until they want to exchange their tokens. This removes the third party risk because you don't have to send your tokens to an exchange to get them traded. You can have them in your own wallet with your own private keys and use this protocol to exchange your tokens for other tokens. What makes this protocol different from other decentralized exchange protocols like 0x is that everything happens on chain, it's instant, and it sources its liquidity from a wide range of reserves. Here's a gross simplification of what it looks like, but here's a visual I retrieved from the Kyber white paper. And here you can see the interaction of the five primary actors in the Kyber network. First, you have users who send and receive tokens to and from the network. Users in Kyber Network include individual users, smart contract accounts, and merchants. Next, you have the reserve entities who provide liquidity to the platform. And these reserve entities can be Kyber's own reserve, or they can be a third-party reserve that are registered by other market makers. Also, these reserves can be classified into public and private reserves, which do and do not take contributions from the public. Then we have reserve contributors who provide capital to the reserve entity and share the platform profit. The actor only exists in public reserves, which accepts contributions from public to build up the reserve. And in terms of liquidity provision, we have reserve managers who maintain the reserve and determine exchange rates and feeds the rates to the Kyber network. Lastly, and probably most importantly, we have Kyber Operator, who is responsible to add and remove reserve entities, list, delist pairs of tokens in the network. Initially, the Kyber team will act as the Kyber Operator to bootstrap the platform in the early phases, much like the 0x protocol. The long-term plan is to decentralize this entity that will be autonomous and rely on self-governance. And I encourage you guys to watch this video until the very end, because when I talk about my outlook, I'm gonna to explain to you guys why game theory principles are vital in the project's long-term success and why those principles are essential for maintaining the project's viability. Next, I wanna take a minute to talk about Kyber's Catalyst upgrade. They announced the upgrade back in December and since then the price of the Kyber network token has been on a complete tear. Full disclosure, I don't have any KNC tokens at the moment, However, I was looking to gain some exposure down here. And in the post COVID environment, I was just playing defensive. I was trying to raise some liquidity and I got a little greedy thinking I could buy it at a cheaper price. And if you guys keep watching this video in a couple minutes, I'm gonna share with you guys whether I've decided to buy the token or pass on it. But coming back to this video review, Kyber Catalyst is gonna be the biggest update the project's had since its inception. Many people bought the token because with this upgrade, KNC holders are gonna be able to stake their tokens and earn rewards in ETH. Not only are they gonna earn rewards in ETH, but they're gonna be able to participate in the governance. 
essentially it gives stakers voting rights. Unlike other DeFi protocols, Kyber will be the only one that has a deflationary staking token through which ETH rewards and token burns are determined by actual network and DeFi usage. And in terms of the most recent update for Catalyst, this month they're announcing a partnership with Protofire. Protofire has a lot of experience in this space. They've worked with MakerDAO, ZeroX, Aragon. So in other words, they're very experienced with DAOs. Since all the platforms I mentioned to you are either providing that service to others or are creating their own decentralized autonomous organizations. And this company is going to build a set of proxy smart contracts to help Kyber DAO's pool operators manage their pools. And this smart contract is going to allow stakers delegating their KNC to the pool master to claim the rewards whenever they want as opposed to having to wait for the pool master to manually calculate and distribute the rewards. In terms of tokenomics, I mean, this is great news for KNC holders because it adds additional utility to the token because currently all you can do is hold the token in hopes of price appreciation. Again, it's one of those tokens that's just a speculative vehicle. But with the inception of Kyber DAO, they're going to bring real utility to the token. And what's going to end up happening is most people are going to end up staking their KNC token. In the past, when we had those manias in the crypto market, because tokens didn't offer real utility and because there weren't many passive income opportunities, most people ended up selling their tokens when they saw parabolic price increases. Staking and burning isn't just a short-term catalyst, but it also provides a strong price floor. I mean, just to illustrate the point, I'm lending out crow tokens on crypto.com and I'm earning 18% on them. And within a couple of weeks, I made enough money to pay for dinner. Within the application, I was able to convert my crow tokens into a Whole Foods gift card. Because of crypto.com staking model, I'm incentivized to keep my original crow balance staked. And also at the same time, I don't have to sell any of my original investment for short-term liquidity needs. And even though you may not be able to do that with Kyber, remember their exchange protocol allows you to switch or convert any of your tokens into another ERC-20 asset. And if you've watched my weekly updates, you know that there's a DeFi debit card coming out. So don't be surprised if in the near future, you're able to take your rewards from KNC staking and spend them using your DeFi debit card. Remember, Kyber Network is building a protocol that can be used by anybody without Kyber's permission. It's a great way for platforms to add immediate liquidity without having to go through the long, arduous and exhaustive process of generating liquidity on their own. Just to use an analogy, imagine you using Google Maps with a couple of clicks versus building your own iteration of Google Maps yourself. This way, platforms are free to focus on the core services that they want to offer their clients. In terms of the most recent integrations, we've seen Kyber integrated into Decentraland, Ethermon, Set Protocol, Block Emio. And you can see here on their homepage that they're supported by numerous wallets, numerous e-commerce payments platforms, decentralized finance platforms, exchanges. So it's no surprise that they've done over $1 billion in trades since their launch. And part of the reason why I think so many wallets and platforms have integrated this protocol is because it's easy to integrate. The transaction is instant. Also, they've created an easy way for these platforms to collect a small fee for integrating the protocol into their respective platforms and wallets. And even my favorite DeFi wallet has decided to integrate Kyber. If you want to learn more about Argent, I will include a video card at the very end of this video. In my view, it's one of the best ways to get your feet wet when you're experimenting with the DeFi ecosystem. I'm inclined to think that the DeFi party is just getting started. So this list is likely to grow in the coming months to years. Next up, we're going to talk a little bit about the team. And in a way, I think the fact that this is mostly an Asian team, it kind of demonstrates the power of network effects. The number of people working on Ethereum is huge in itself. But what really amazes me is that you'll find people around the globe that are involved in Ethereum in one way or another. Once I go over a few of the core members of the team, you'll quickly notice that none of these people grew up in Europe or America. They were born and raised in countries like Vietnam. And I hope it serves to demonstrate how far reaching the network effect of Ethereum is. Loi Lu is the CEO and founder of Kyber Network. He's an advisor and investor in Signum, which is the first digital bank in Switzerland. He's also a blockchain advisor to Cambria. 
He was a research assistant at Singapore University, where he got his PhD in computer science. And before that, he got his bachelor's in computer science at the University of Hanoi. And Victor Tran is the co-founder at Kyber Network. He has a lot of technical skills. That's what led him to becoming the technical advisor to Big Bomb ICO. He was a lead engineer at SmartPool. He was a CTO at Selexi. And he got his computer science degree at Vietnam National University. He even has a little bit of experience with machine learning. Next up is Sunny Jane, who's the head of product. And he has a lot of experience with payments. He was a senior manager at Lazada Group for digital payments. He dealt with supply demand management at Apple. And he was a product manager at Global Blue. He got his master of business at Nanyang Technical University. And he got his bachelor's in consulting and strategy in a university in India. And it even looks like in a certain capacity, he attended Stanford and he focused on strategic decision making and risk management. And in terms of advisors, the only one that I can personally recognize is Vitalik. But you have to understand just because someone is listed as an advisor does not necessarily mean that they're deeply involved with the project. Generally speaking, the role of advisors is to give the project access to their network. And also at times people use advisors to add legitimacy to their project if they're doing an ICO. And lastly, it can also serve as a way to give the project a little bit more publicity. And through their network, they were able to secure partnerships with other platforms. Not only do we have this list here of partners, but as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of platforms that have integrated the Kyber network protocol. Now to end the video, I'm just going to give you guys my closing thoughts on the project. Obviously, Kyber Network has the big lead, even though I think projects like Zero X could potentially overtake Kyber Network. We can't deny that Kyber Network is the number one liquidity provider to the entire Ethereum ecosystem when it comes to DEXs. And as I learn more about the project, the more I tend to fall in love with it because I firmly believe that projects in the long term have to decentralize if they want to be ubiquitous, they want to be widely adopted. I mean, think about it. If the exchange was, let's say, decentralized in the sense that you can keep custody of your assets, but was centralized because if you wanted to use the protocol, for example, if I was Argent Wallet and I wanted to integrate the Kyber protocol into my platform, I would first have to ask Kyber Network for their permission. Not only would that be a bottleneck for adoption, but people may go somewhere else if they have to ask Kyber Network for their permission, and projects might elect to go for permissionless protocols versus permission protocols. So in that regard, Kyber is definitely heading in the right direction. But very importantly, I believe in game theory principles, you have to offer actors incentives to participate in your network. So from the top to the bottom, they're offering everybody incentives, everybody a way to extract value from participating in this network. If you're an investor, if you're a token holder, you can now stake those tokens, get a voting right, but also get a piece of the action because you get paid some ETH for providing liquidity. Secondly, you could manage one of these reserve pools. And by doing so, you get a piece of the action anytime someone wants to make a trade. And lastly, all the platforms out there if they integrate the protocol, there's even incentives for them to take a cut of the action when someone on their platform uses Kyber Network to execute a transaction. For projects to be successful for the long-term horizon, I firmly believe that they'll need to develop a decentralized autonomous organization. DAOs may not seem important today, but eventually I think once people realize how successful DAO-based platforms are, and you have academics writing about tokenomics, every new project out there, every ambitious project leader is going to have it in their mind to eventually decentralize their project. In the initial stages, you have to baby the project. You have to hold the project's hand. And once the project achieves a certain amount of growth, you can let go of the project's hand and let it run autonomously. And I think that DAOs are gonna be a key component to that. Now, many of you guys might be wondering after watching this video review if it's worth getting into the project, especially since it's gone up by a factor of 10. Obviously, I can't offer financial advice, but me personally, I'm going to start converting some of my major altcoins that I've been holding for quite some time, like Litecoin. I'm going to be converting some of those coins into DeFi platforms. In fact, I already have. There's one DeFi token that nobody is talking about that I think has the most potential. 
I've already converted a sizable portion of my portfolio into that token already. And if you guys want to know which token that was, the best way to learn about it is subscribing to my Patreon. But if you don't have the funds to join Patreon, you could also find out about the token for free by following me on social media because I tend to talk about the token a lot. Or you can join my Discord channel by clicking the link in the description below. But aside from that token, when it comes to other tokens like KNC, I'm going to slowly start converting some of my Litecoin and some of the other alts that I've had for quite some time. I'm going to begin converting those over into DeFi tokens like KNC. My personal view on the entire DeFi ecosystem is that much like 2017 was fueled by the ICO mania, I think beginning 2020 and maybe ending around 2023, 2022, the crypto bull market rally is probably going to be led by DeFi tokens like Link, Synthetics token, Lend token. And so even though I missed the opportunity to buy the token at a cheaper price, I think we've yet to see some of the more parabolic gains. So for that reason, I still don't think that it's too late to get in. And if you're interested to learn more about my insights, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel. Click that notification bell. Don't forget to subscribe to that free newsletter. You'll get routine updates on DeFi projects, tokens I'm investing in, and much, much more. And if you enjoyed the content, do me a huge favor by liking this video, commenting down below, and subscribing to my channel. With that being said, this is Crypto One Step signing out. I'll talk to you folks next time. Bye.